All right, Bears watch. Uh, oh number one God. pick, Caleb Williams, struggled, continues, reports some Bears players want Caleb Williams benched. Uh, and they want to turn to <laughs> Tyson Bajant. So what? Caleb sacked nine times last week. Should the Bears consider benching Caleb? Danny, I'll give that yeah, to Danny. you. <laughs> Go. Well, no. I can't believe we're here. Like, th this is depressing. I, I mean, honestly, Mitch Trubisky, Justin Fields, Caleb Williams, how are we having the same conversations about Caleb Williams that we had with those other guys when he's the first overall pick, supposed to be this generational prospect, going into this unbelievable situation, nine games into the whole thing? Like it, It's really crazy how much this is history repeating itself and just torturing Bears fans. But Tyson Bajit, come on. That's the problem. Come on. He, nice kid, good story, very limited skill set. <laughs> Doesn't have a very strong arm. Gets the ball out quick. Works hard. Only took four sacks in the four games that he started last year. But even if it's true that some players on the Bears think that against Green Bay, they'd have a little bit better shot with Tyson Bajan than Caleb Williams, you've got to see the forest through the trees. Caleb Williams has so much more talent than Tyson Bajan, it's not even worth discussing, that if this team's ever going to win anything of substance, they have to do it with Caleb Williams. So I don't think we're close to this, but the fact that it's even being discussed is truly depressing. Well, I mean, the other part of it is, if you did bench him, and so, again, you don't have a veteran, competent quarterback, and use Flacco as an example, yeah. who's won a bunch of games and been sure. in the league forever, where you could say, at least they're going to get competent play out of the quarterback. Yeah. No disrespect to Tyson Bajan. No one's ever heard of him outside of Chicago, because yeah. he only played a couple games last year. But if you do go through with that, let's just pretend for a minute that the players were totally empowered and they got what they wanted, the limited number of guys that think yeah. allegedly that you know, Caleb should be benched. You can't go back to him. So you're basically telling well, they, I mean, they, everybody. They would eventually go back to him. Next the number, year. He's the number one pick. Next year. You can't bench him for Tyson Bajan in week 10 and then a week 14 in a lost season go, oh, now we're bringing him back. Yeah. The second I, part I, of I mean, it that bothers me is – we talked about the dysfunction with this team literally in week one. And we were kind of poo-pooed on that. Now nah, you know what you're talking about. You don't know Chicago. Right. When players anonymously or privately put into the ether, the young stud quarterback needs a little taste of humble pie and needs to be benched, that's dysfunction at its highest form. You've been a part of it? A hundred percent. You know, I mean, it worked in Carolina, right? Like Bryce Young gets benched, Did it? right? You, he's played well or I think better the last a quarterback than Bryce okay, Young. He's played, but but you look at you just look at the overall organization, and I've been saying this forever. You think you just load up on weapons, and all of a sudden you've developed a quarterback? It's not how it works, right? You've got to protect him. You've got to run the football. You've got to understand what you know what you're doing. Then it's imperative, imperative to teach a young guy how to prepare in the NFL, how to game plan in the NFL. The fact that you don't have a veteran quarterback on your roster, somebody to mentor the young guy and say, hey, man, here's how we study film right. in the NFL. Here's how we study our opponent in the NFL. Here's how we prep. This is what we do on Mondays. This is what we do on Tuesdays. This is what we do on Thursdays. You know, it, it's interesting. I had a conversation with Jimmy Garoppolo after he, be, after he got traded from New England to the San Francisco 49ers. I said, give me one thing that you learned from Tom Brady, playing with Tom Brady as a young quarterback. He said that football is not a job, it's a lifestyle. The quarterback sure. position is not a job, it's a lifestyle. And you have to be so embedded in the bedrock of preparing and getting yourself ready. So, and if the rest of the team doesn't see it on a week-to-week -week basis, if they watch that because you're the quarterback, you get all the attention, you get all the accolades, you get all the, you know, you get all the shine. If you're not prepping, you know what? You become public enemy number one in the sure. locker room. And, and so that – actually becomes a today story because today's the day that Caleb Williams speaks and since week one guys have talked about like Mercedes Lewis veteran tight end been in the league for sure. forever he talked about how they need to be coached harder their practice habits need to be better from the 40 year old on the roster to the 21 year old on the roster Cole Komet their tight end said we got to respect respect practice more we got to do a better job at making every rep count they aren't saying but not Caleb. Caleb's doing it. Like, Caleb is lumped in with that. So it'll be very interesting today to see how he responds to that report. But I think right. the point Mark made is a good one, and I know you're with him as well, 
When you're going to try to develop a young stud franchise quarterback, part of that you have to know that I don't care who it is, there's going to be growing pains, right? Yes. You know, C.J. Stroud was an outlier last year, and he's not going to have as good a year, in my opinion, this year, and you're seeing that. You know, we all mock the Colt McCoys of the NFL. Yeah. You know, the Joe Flacco's, the longtime yeah. journeyman quarterbacks right. who aren't quite good enough. Flacco's a bad example uh, of being a franchise guy and leading you for multiple seasons but those guys are needed. Ryan Tannehill, yeah. Andy yeah. Dalton, right. guys yeah. like right. that. And they, the Bears thought that they had it with an assistant coach who was in Tampa under Tom Brady. But it's not the same as a dude no. who's in practice wearing a helmet. And so, yeah, not giving him a veteran backup was a mistake. And But here's the thing, too. Caleb has not been a disaster. There have been moments. We have talked about him on the show. We have shown the clips. There has been high-level plays. There have been high-level games. He has a four-touchdown game. He has multiple 300-yard games. He has a winning streak. He's shown resiliency in games. We're not there yet. If he gets sacked 10 times against Green Bay, if he pouts, if it comes out today yeah. that his players, his teammates have lost complete confidence in him, then we can revisit it. But I don't think it's that. I don't think players have lost faith in what Caleb Williams can be eventually. They just want to win t- the next now, week's game. Well, that, they got to think bigger picture uh, than that. I, I, players don't think bigger I know picture. They, don't, they, they, they think about what's good for me today. And right now, and I've been in that situation. I was in Washington in 94 when we drafted a guy in the first round, we drafted a guy in the seventh round. And and it was apparent from day one. I mean, the first practice. They've the guy, the guy, yeah, I'm going to give them to you. Okay, just, just be patient. Be I'm patient. Just, I'm, Look at you. I'm, I'm, you're I'm, all fidgety. I'm, you're I'm, fidgety, I'm, right? Just yeah. relax. I'm building up the Mark suspense. Mark Griffin I am building and Jay Schrader. No, oh. no, 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 no. So they draft. Okay, so the seventh rounder, the, day, the very first day we're like, seventh rounder is better than the first rounder. There's no question. And so as a player, you want that guy to have success. It was Gus Farratt versus Heath Schuler. And, the, and it wasn't oh close. God, they both stink. <laughs> <laughs> we were bad at the time. We were bad, Craig. But the point was, but the I point just, was that he should was like the fourth overall pick. I thought you were talking about like Billy Kilmer. I just resent that Caleb I, well, hey, listen, man, I am old as the friends. hills, but Just I'm not Ferrat, Billy Kilmer Schuler, old. Schuler, and Tyson Bajan. <laughs> Caleb's going to be fine. All right. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.